we're going to talk about how to communicate competently in small groups and talk about a few different ways to view and approach competent communication. So we're working out of BB and Masterson's book on communicating in small groups. I will put a link to that book in the description below this video. So first, let's define what this means. A competent group communicator is a person who is able to interact appropriately and effectively with others in small groups and teams. So Michael Mayer says that the two most important fundamental behaviors is that you, a you have number one you have to participate so you have to fully participate in discussions and especially when analyzing a problem and if you do that other people will see you as a competent group member you have to contribute there and the second thing to do is to be nice you want to offer encouragement and supportive comments to other people so if you participate and you're nice to other people then those are the fundamental behaviors people will see you as a competent group communicator. There's other ways to get at this, though. Here are some personal qualities that we associate with competent group communicators. Number one, you got to be motivated. When you are a motivated group member and you're there to do a good job, people that translates in people's minds as that you are a competent group communicator. Number two, you have to have appropriate knowledge. So when you show up, you have to know what you're doing. I was at a meeting uh, not too long ago where one of my friends, I, I like this guy, I work with him, but he wasn't ready. And he said to me outside of the meeting, were we supposed to like have this all prepared and ready to go? And I noticed that when we got into the meeting, he had no knowledge, right? Number two, he had no knowledge. And he just kind of sat there and looked around and was like, oh my gosh, I hope nobody realizes that I'm not really ready to contribute fully. And he wasn't acting as a competent group member. It really stood out. And I think people could tell that he hadn't been ready. He didn't have the knowledge the, to contribute. And number three, you must have the skills to act appropriately. So in a group, there is a dynamic of participating and working with other people. You have to have a certain level of skill to interact smoothly and participate well. So those are some personal qualities that we're looking for in competent group communicators. And now let's look at this list of core of nine core competencies for group communication. These will look familiar if you study groups at all. Uh, but even, even for me, there were some things that I thought were pretty interesting here. The first group of skills is around the issue of problem solving. You have to be uh, have problem-oriented competency. So you have to be able to identify and define problems clearly that the group is working on. And then secondly, you have to be able to analyze that problem, pick it apart, see it for what it is. If you can wrap your head around the kinds of problems the group is facing, then you will be seen as a, a competent group member. Uh, the second grouping is all about solution-oriented competencies. Now, I've said this a lot in classes and workshops and, and teachings that I've done and writings that I've done, but you have to offer solutions. If you want to be seen as helpful, you can't just point out problems. You have to offer solutions as well. So one of the key parts of this is identifying a criteria. So you have to say, here's what a good solution would look like. You give an ideal standard. If we, we know we have a good solution, if it solves our problem in these two ways, you know, you've got to be clear about that. If you can do that, that's a huge value added for the group. You have to be good at generating solutions. That's another skill. Brainstorming, coming up with ideas and offering what you have to the group. So you're putting your ideas out there, your point of view out there on the table, not just evaluating others' ideas, putting your ideas out there. And the third competency under solution-oriented competencies is evaluating solutions. You have to show your evaluation skills by evaluating the strengths and the weaknesses of the different possibilities that the group has to move forward. So those are the first five. There are two problem-oriented competencies and three solution-oriented competencies. The next group is about discussion management competencies. So in a group, there's lots of talk happening. There's lots of stuff happening all at once, and it can get a little confusing. So you have to maintain a task focus when you're in groups. You have to be able to stay on task, as they say, and not drift and not get blurry and not get distracted. The second part of that is managing interactive interaction. You have to be able to handle the flow of interacting with other people in a group. 
Some people get very nervous in a group. Some people don't want to contribute in a group. But you have to, have to be able to discuss ideas and manage that dynamic for yourself and even help in, in a way that's helpful for, for others. And the last two are on relationship competencies. Relational competencies is first is managing conflict. When there's a little disagreement, when there's something going on, a little tension, you have to be able to manage that conflict appropriately. You have to not just escalate the issue and make it let it blow up. You have to manage that conflict a little more smoothly than that so that the project and the team can move forward. And the last one is you have to be able to maintain a positive group climate. That's a key competency. People get tired, people get stressed, people get burned out, people disagree. And in the midst of that, if you can manage to maintain a positive group climate with the people around you, even, even though some forces are conspiring against you, then you'll be seen as a competent group communicator. So those are the some setup material in terms of the basics and some personal qualities of competent group communicators. And here are the nine core competencies according to the research of competent group communicators. So it's a ton of material, but if you look at all that, I'm wondering what are the takeaways that you have personally? Where do you see yourself in all of these competencies? Maybe what do you wanna work on the most? What are you best at? I would love to hear your comments in that section below, and I look forward to reading them. Take care and I'll see you next time.